or get with one of the board directors. Their names are in the playbill. Or if you want, raise your hand right now. I can get somebody to get your information. We are interested in I got appointed, yeah. You to? Yes, we are. We can put you to work. My youngest crew member was 10 years old. I think Abby was my first youngest crew member. She did great. Um, let's see, like I said, the captains were very proud to put this production on. They're excited, so I'll move it along to Sunday before we get started. Uh, we want to say a huge thank you to our makeup artist, Brandy Marie with Pretty Face Squad, for doing, she did the makeup on the first night. Um, she had a family emergency, so she wasn't able to do it last night, which all uh, mothers, all the mothers and other cast members from Flu stepped in and came and did all the kids' makeup for her. I mean, I, one text and it went out and the whole family just came together. It was great. Uh, also want to... <laughs> also want to thank our sponsors, our stars, star donors, First State Bank, Ganado Community Development Corp, Ganado Rotary Club, J and K Services, J and K Storage, Jackson County Hospital, Harrison and Jeanette Stafford, Harlan and Anna Lee Tegler, which by the way, Anna Lee Ms. Tegler, she is the one that is responsible for all the artwork on the, the set. She did an outstanding job. Um, and then another thank you to all the parents of the cast. Without y'all, this would not have happened. These kids were up here from 6 to 8.30, two days, three days a week. They were bugging me to rehearse more than that. No, it was like, come on, guys, we gotta go. And they're like, no, my parents are fine. They can sit out there. I'm like, <laughs> so, but uh, thank you, everybody. And once again, another thing is, thank you for coming back to the live theater. It, it's good to be able to open back up and get everybody back together and just enjoy life. <coughs> so, sit back, relax, relax, and enjoy some monster soup. I don't know what'll become of us. I just want 
from Mother Beth here, forgetfulness powder. You ain't exactly famous for your forgetfulness powder, though. You gave some to John Henry last summer when you were sharing his skin. Now we got the only fake meat fresh with an ulcer. What's all the excitement? <laughs> He is an eye for me, but it is an evil eye. He is 
so cruel that when he stalks through the corn, he pulls out the ears. Nasty, nasty flea songs. I want to see become of us. I cannot allow any misfortune to befall dear old gray-headed granny and my aunt. For although they are odd in their ways, they've always been good and kind and considerate to me. The more this girl is swallowed away. Do not fret, Granny. Surely something will dissuade than a fairy villain from his inopportune mission. A doll or seven five. A fortune! Oh, Adam. <laughs> oh, Adam May. I wish you wasn't so politician in here. The man is a blessing in disguise. Alas, Granny, I do not understand. Is that one of my daughters is supposed to come to know the class? But, Granny, what makes you think lawyer please from will marry one of the school sisters? He's a man, ain't he? Yes. And many of well and bad brothers, beauties, ain't they? I think you mean ravishing. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, they do not know how they appear to others. And I've always been able to shield them from the outside world. It's Florence Leesome. They have come on this or get out. Oh, oh, he's here. The richest and most heartless man in graveyard corners. He holds a mortgage on this humble cabin. Uh, the enchanting Adam May, Lily of the Swamp, and the ghoul of a grandmother. <laughs> My plan to see that ghoul won't live long enough to be able to look. Uh -huh. Little do they also know about that plan that I have for that trio of harpies that I'll name you Pearl. Hi, the law, Fleasum. Evening, Granny Ghoul. Evening. Uh, enough for pleasantries. You're aware why I've come? A racket has got the mortgage. Well, no one would mistake me for a full of brush tail. <laughs> of course it's about the mortgage. You have the money. Go stay and eat with us? Please do. Oh, uh, what are you having? Critters. No. Critters? I like fritters. What kind? Apple or banana? No, no, not critters. Critters. <laughs> Swamp critters. <laughs> Swamp critters? But the main course is going to be muscle soup. I'm dieting. <laughs> <laughs> Enough! I'm a man of sensitive tastes and a delicate stump. Oh, lawyer, please, I'm sure they'll give us more time to raise the money. Adame, if it were up to me alone, I would do anything to oblige you, but I'm a businessman with responsibilities. And, well, business is business. Perhaps something will work out. Adame! <laughs> my pet wait. I wish to have words with you. I gotta talk to you, Lord, please. I'm queen about the mortgage money. I reckon that's your problem, not mine. Pro, pro man. When the clock strikes midnight, you and those ghoul sisters must be off my property. You have no heart. I don't need one. I'm a businessman. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. How about time you got here? I just like coming to these hills at night. Ain't afraid, are you, preacher? Oh, it's you, Granny Bull. Naturally, it's me. Who else do you expect to find in Granny Bull's cabin? It's just that one has such strange tales about these hills. What kind of tales? Oh, Granny! I'm a common girl. I just wish my husband could be you lost me, so. But he's not. He was a menace to help and limb. Cruel, cruel man. You said a most important thing about Granny's husband. Well, you never met the man. He was even a man at all. What do you mean? I could never quite tell what he was. He was like something he'd been in a game of cards if you were lost. Sort of a heap of cubs with fur. Heap? Fur? I've always seen more animal than man. Really? Once tried to chew my thumb off. Not terrible. And I'm sure if I hadn't carried a big club with even bats, would have gone to my throat. He should have been behind bars. Well, you're not far off. He did sleep in a cage. A cage? Still, I brought him no grudge. I bought him a jacket for his birthday. How kind. A straight jacket. <laughs> <laughs> but he clawed right through the buckle. I think I better leave him Oh, no. I need you. Why did we have to come here in the dead of night? Well, because if we came here in the dead of day, we wouldn't find anything. <laughs> they only show up in the dark, like night crawlers. The Gould family houses to a favorable vacation resort. Everyone thinks they're quite 
Once Granny Go came to town and she wanted to take her scout there and ask for a deposit. They think you have a daddy's different. Oh, I'm certain we all feel that way, preacher. Everyone in Graveyard Corner could sleep a lot easier if those dual sisters were gone. How can we get them to go? Well, they're nice and I can leave. And when I do, I plan to marry the goal of my dream. You mean Adam eh? Well, I certainly don't mean Belle. They all call that one Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> Because she's half crap. <laughs> <laughs> I made arrangements with Professor Barker at the Barker Brothers Circus to uh, buy the ghouls. Buy the ghouls? Well, that's what I said. But they're not yours, so. Well, what does that matter? They'll be the greatest sideshow attraction of the century. Face facts, Peter, they're not human. Their brother was a werewolf, and their cousin Horace was a zombie. A zombie? <gasps> the best part of their family tree is on the ground. Some of they won't stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Granny and her daughter belong to the service. You should feel ashamed of yourself. Why? I'm getting a good price. The wolf is an maybe odd, but that's the way you to take advantage of them. Odd? On Valentine's Day, they cut your heart out. My fault, don't know about your wild scheme. No, you won't. You'll do just as I say until I'm ready to tie them out with that in May. And if I refuse? I'll hold a mortgage on the church. 